Hey everyone, welcome back to Living Survival. My name is Ben and some of you asked for a gear loadout video. I've done several of these before if I go on a hike or a backpacking uh, trip. Sometimes you guys want to see the loadout. So that's what we're going to look at today. It's a sub 13 pound loadout, which is pretty good for fall. I had some gear that I was reviewing. So we're going to take a look at the contents right now. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about today's channel sponsor, Pro Camp Tech. In my opinion, Pro Camp Tech manufactures some of the best fire starters on the market, including the popular fat rope stick, waxwood sticks, and the all new fast fire stick. If you want fast, efficient, and highly weatherproof fire starters, go prepared with Pro Camp Tech. Hey everyone, Ben from Living Survival. Hopefully this video turns out uh, okay in the gear room here, so not the best lighting, and hopefully the um, the mic is picking me up well, but some of you requested for me to do a loadout of my backpacking uh, contents that I did when I went on the Manistee River Trail. Uh, if you wanna watch that video, it's like one or two videos back. Uh, had a great time with my brother and his buddy. Two nights on the Manistee River Trail, it rained both nights, so um, I was high and dry and, and perfectly fine with the gear that I had, so. That's what I'm going to show you guys today. Some of this stuff I'm going to go more into depth on uh, in future reviews. I was testing out a lot of gear, so uh, let's just get right into it. Um, my base weight, for those of you that don't know what base weight is, that would be basically everything in your pack minus your consumables. So not your fuel for your stove uh, or your water or food. And go ahead and check this here on the scale. Wait for it to lock in. All right, we're at 12.2 pounds, so not too bad. I don't know if you guys can see that, but 12.2 pounds, so certainly not bad. Uh, certainly not my lightest loadout, uh, but it is fall time, so we were expecting uh, colder weather and rain. So there's a little bit more as far as like clothing goes uh, that I wouldn't necessarily take in the warmer months. So this is the Mountain Smith 50 liter Scream Pack, I believe. Um, first time that I was checking this pack out, I actually have one for Kristen as well. This is the Scream 55. Uh, it's the women's version um, of Mountain Smith's ultralight backpacks. Kristen is going to be returning to the channel. We are going to be going on a uh, overnight probably next week and she's going to get to test out some gear including uh, that and some other items that we'll go over in a moment. Great pack though, future review coming up on this. Uh, some few highlights of it is that it is lightweight. Uh, it's got a roll top closure so it doesn't have the, the lid on it. Most ultralight backpacks are removing the lid now. You really just don't need it. Um, one thing that I really like about this pack is that it does have the uh, sort of a duffel bag entry so that you can unzip this all the way around in a U shape and flip it over and it becomes sort of just a duffel bag. And that's really nice for you know looking at the gear that you have inside or being able to grab something in the bottom. You can see here that I can just kind of, I can kind of suitcase that open and I have all my gear in there, which is, which is awesome. You can take all your gear and look at it uh, in a glance there. And of course you want to, you know, pack your backpack accordingly. Usually your sleep system is on the bottom. Miscellaneous stuff, cookware, you know, items are in the middle, heavier stuff in the middle. And then I put my clothes and little items that I want to get too fast on the top there and then you know this pack has all the all the amenities to it nice nice back system nice shoulder straps nice hip belt pockets on the hip belts um, nice side pockets here and then of course it compresses down and then on the front you have two large pockets here which is great because normally you can only stow stuff you know in your side pockets which is usually taken up by a water bottle or two water bottles then you have the small hip pockets. Um, you might may have a, you know, if you have a lid, that's where you can keep your, your quick access items, but not having the lid, lid it is nice to have these two uh, large pockets to put things in uh, on the side. So I guess we can start there and then we'll go into the context of the pack. So again, no lid. Um, we can open up this side pocket here. On this side, I just have, you know, items I wanted to access quickly. So I have a, a rain jacket. Now I want to talk a little bit about this rain jacket. This is the brand new Outdoor Research Helium. This is their newest version of the Helium uh, rain jacket. Super duper ultra lightweight. You know, a lot of people won't pay for this because it is expensive, but when you want to count on your rain gear and you don't want it to take up a, a huge amount of weight in your pack, you know, Outdoor Research is the way to go. They also make pants that I have. These are ultra lightweight as well. They've got a nice elastic band. They've got the zips up so that you can get them on with boots, which is 
which is crucial. Now, a lot of people will just take like frog togs or something like that. Um, I've tried all those. Um, I don't like to hike in the frog togs because they get sweaty. I don't like to hike in the ponchos because they get sweaty. Um, you know, a, a nice rain jacket that breathes well, but still going to keep you nice and dry. This thing did an awesome job. I've worn it on several different, you know, outings in the woods where it's been raining. And I have no complaints whatsoever about this jacket. Again, expensive, but it's not going to weigh you down at all. And remember, you know, people out there are thinking, oh, well, I can carry a couple extra pounds. I'd rather carry those extra pounds with comfort items, such as maybe a pillow or, you know, maybe extra food, extra clothing. Um, so where you can save space is in your gear. So you can, you know, slowly upgrade to more ultralight gear, ounces, you know, lead to pounds and it really does add up uh, over time. If you can cut, you know, three, four, five ounces off each piece of gear, that adds up. And you can either replace that with comfort items or you can just be a lot lighter. You know, you can go from a 20 plus pound pack to a, a 15 and under pound pack. So that's what works for me. Outdoor research, great stuff. Then below that, I have a pack cover that I just stole off a Deuter pack. Uh, this came with the Deuter pack. Uh, no rain cover came with this one. I'm glad I had it because I did use this to cover up my boots at night in the vestibule and I did use it on the final day to hike out. So that, those were the quick stash items in the left here, something that I could just drop the pack real quick and grab those if it started to rain. Then on the other side here I have uh, my toiletry kit which I'll go in a little more into depth in a, in a moment. I have my water filter. I took the, uh, the Bee Free with the CNOC 2 liter bladder it's just you know it's just there's no question about it that this is my favorite setup for ultralight hiking the bag weighs nothing the, the filter itself weighs nothing it's got a nice fast flow much faster than a sawyer mini you can scoop water up with this thing super easily and uh it's just a no-brainer it packs up you know really small so i have that in the side pocket there for my water filtration not only can i filter that into bottles but i can fill the whole two liters up hang it on a tree use it to wash use it to wash dishes it just works out really really well then i have just a miscellaneous uh sort of a possibilities pouch here this is an aceta summit ultra light bag we'll look at that in a moment so that kind of does it for the front pockets here uh, in the side pocket i always carry this little thermarest uh, Z seat, I think is what it's called. Super lightweight. It works great this weekend for sitting on logs, stuff like that. That's going to keep you not only insulated but keep you dry. Then I have my little fuel bottle um, for my alcohol stove. I did choose an alcohol stove because cooler temps. I don't really use, like to use the butane, and of course the alcohol and alcohol stoves weigh a lot less. So that's it for the side pockets. Then what I had in the hip or the, uh, the little uh, hip pouches here was I had my headlamp. I took this Skill Hunt headlamp to test out. Really, really nice light. A little bit heavier than I would normally carry. Could definitely save a few ounces by going back to a backpacking style headlamp. But I was testing that out. And then on the other side here, I have just my keys, which, you know, I can detach all the dangly stuff and just take my key fob. I could hide this by my car if I, if I really wanted to cut uh, down weight, but it does have a Swiss Army knife on it, a little classic, and it does have a backup light on it. So yeah, I figure it's worth taking and that one in the other side pocket. The only thing that I had in my pockets on my person would be my wallet, which is, you know, a very minimalist wallet. And then on the other side, I had my uh, little Swiss Army knife. So this is the only knife that I took. It has a knife on it, has a saw on it, um, you know, a few extra tools. I did put a clip on it because I like to clip it to my uh, pant ring when I'm hiking there so that not only is my pocket free then, um, but it's not gonna go anywhere. I have thought about how many times I could have lost this and how many times it's dumped out of my pocket, whether I'm in my shelter, whether I'm doing something and it just dumps out. So nice little clip on that. Then we can undo the top closure here. It just rolls up so you can see you got a lot more room. When I had food in here, you know, obviously it was a lot higher. Uh, up top, I just have my clothes bag. In this I would have I brought a hat and gloves because it was going to be colder. Have an extra set of boxers in here, a pair of shorts. I like to sleep in shorts even when it's really cold. Uh, extra pair of socks for camp, a warmer pair of socks. A, uh, a breathable t-shirt, a breathable long sleeve shirt. And I believe that's about it uh, for my clothes. These go in a Sea to Summit waterproof bag. 
Now something like my possibilities pouch isn't waterproof, it's just it's still nylon so it's ultra light. But for my clothes, since these are critical to stay dry, these do go in a little bit heavier of a dry sack, a Cedar Summit waterproof dry sack. Then I have my cook kit. We'll go into that in a moment. I'll bring you guys in closer and we'll go into some of that stuff. I brought a Cedar Summit reactor liner. I did end up using this the first night. This adds a few degrees to your sleeping bag. Um, it's just a, you know, a thermal liner, which you just get into and then you get in your sleeping bag. It does weigh a little bit. So, you know, this would be one way I'd cut weight in the, in the warmer months, but I'm glad I had it cause I did actually use this the first night and I was fully clothed the first night. Second night, it was a little bit warmer. Didn't use the liner and slept in my shorts. And it did rain both nights. I have a little Sea to Summit pillow. Um, again, one of those little comfort items, but this thing weighs nothing and it works great. Uh, if I wanted to go a little bit lighter, I could just use my clothes bag. That would work perfectly as a pillow as well. I don't know why I didn't just do that, but I threw it in there since I had it. And uh, it's comfortable. All right, next up is my sleeping pad. This is a Sea to Summit Ether Light XL, I believe. I reviewed this in the past. Really, really nice pad. It's thick. It's like four inches thick, three to four inches thick. So it's very comfortable. It is mummy style, but what I like about these Sea to Summit pads is that you don't tend to slip off them. Thermarest pads, I'm always slipping off them. Um, unless it's a rectangular pad from Big Agnes, for example, with the sides that go up a little bit higher, always slipping off. I don't find that I do that with these Sea to Summit pads. So that's great. I actually got um, Kristen a, um, I think this has an R value of like 4.5 or something. This is what she's gonna take because it's gonna be cooler. So another very cool um, Sea to Summit pad. And then I actually got her a um, five degree uh, Sea to Summit uh, women's sleeping bag. So pretty similar to the men's, these just have wider hips, um, but this is gonna work great. And for a five degree bag, you know, this is nice and lightweight, nice and small. So this is the sleep system that she's gonna be using on our upcoming hike along with the brand new uh, Brand new pack from Mountain Smith there. Uh, we can look at my sleeping bag. This one's an 18 degree bag, a little bit smaller as far as how it stuffs. This is a Spark series. Both down bags, by the way. See, so they're, they're very small and lightweight. Um, again, hers is a few degrees warmer, so it's gonna be a little bit bigger. But these stuff down really well. And then finally, I have my tent. This is the Six Moon Designs Lunar Solo. Uh, it's just a solo tent that pitches using a um, trekking pole. Really, really cool. It does come with a stuff sack that's kind of long. So what I found is when I was packing in my bag, it just wasn't evening out. You know, one thing you want to do when you pack your bag is you want to have everything nice and even. Um, not only for, you know, just to build up the structure of the pack. So what I did was I transferred it to this stuff sack, which is a Sea to Summit. Uh, just one of their sill, you know, nylon, not waterproof or anything stuff sacks but that makes it about the same size as my sleeping bag so putting those down into my pack you know evens that out and makes the, the weight nice and even on the bottom of the pack so that's about it for the pack itself nice lightweight pack I'm definitely going to be using this again when Kristen uses hers and then I'll do a complete review on these packs but I like it so far um, some of the other stuff that didn't go on the pack would be my hiking boots I did bring these Solomon hiking boots. I usually wear trail runners, but I knew it was going to be wet and muddy, and I know these are going to keep my feet dry. So although these aren't the most comfortable for a lot of ups and downs, um, my toes tend to ride up in the front of these, and sometimes they get sore. I knew that these would be the best for the conditions, and I'm glad I brought them. Um, trekking poles. These are just my Black Diamond trekking poles that I've had forever. Again, the ups and downs, these come in very, very handy to have and I needed one to pitch my shelter. Um, just electronics, I brought just my cell phone and then a GoPro, this is what I filmed on. It's a GoPro 8, it's got the hyper smooth technology. So, you know, even though you're walking and bouncing up and down, the, the footage stays really, really uh, uh, smooth. And then I don't have to lug a huge, uh, you know, camera out into the woods. So if you haven't seen that video, go back and see the trip video and you can see the footage taken uh, with the GoPro. Let me bring you on a little bit closer here and I'll show you some of the, the smaller items in more detail. All right, so starting back at the top of the pack again, see the Summit uh, waterproof bag. Again, in here I just had a uh, short sleeve shirt, long sleeve shirt, boxers, extra pair of socks, hat, gloves, 
and it also can work as a pillow. This is just an eight liter pack. I do have a still nylon version of this uh, this dry bag in the in the eight liter, but again, clothes are critical to me, so I definitely add an ounce or two and just take the heavier weight waterproof bag. Uh, my possibilities pouch here. This is uh, Sea to Summit Ultralight. And in here I just had my tent stakes, and then I had my toilet paper, and then I had some extra cordage in here, uh, which is now attached to the tent. I did use a couple extra lines to guy out the sides, so this is generally what I take as my little possibilities pouch, and I throw just all the odds and ends, you know, that I'm not going to need on the trail necessarily, but maybe when I need to set up at camp. Um, maybe I could throw the headlamp in there, you know, I could throw the water filter in there. So, you know, a lot of things can go in your little possibilities pouch. And so I just use a little, little lightweight bag for that. Um, let's see, I got my pad and my sleeping bag. So this is my sleep system from Sea to Summit. Got my tent again in a um, Sea to Summit ultralight bag. Uh, I also use this for my bear bag. So when I had my tent pitched up, I threw a little uh, carabiner. I actually took the one off my... Uh, Swiss Army knife here and clipped it to that and then this is what hung in the tree with my food They were also in um, Ziploc bags uh, my food was so I didn't I wasn't worried about them getting wet because this is not waterproof My um, sit pad which works really really well You can you know set your food and stuff on it. You can set stuff that you're doing on it And of course you can also sit on it uh, Camera gear GoPro 8 iPhone fuel bottle and wallet. I stay really minimal. This again could stay at the car. You could just throw your ID in your pocket and save some ounces there if you wanted to. Little pillow and the um, reactor liner. These are probably, you know, the comfort items that I took. Uh, you know, make it a little bit more comfortable. And I had my Outdoor Research rain jacket. Just, just an awesome jacket. The helium jacket. Um, I won't go with any other rain jacket except for this. This has been tested. It's got taped zippers. Um, you know, frog togs work okay. That's what a lot of people carry or just a, you know, real lightweight poncho. But for me, when I'm hiking, I don't like to be sticky. I don't like to be sweaty. I like it to breathe well. I like it to, most importantly to keep me dry and that definitely does that. Um, so we can look at my toiletry bag. Um, little seal line bag. It's not waterproof, but it's nice and lightweight. It just it just worked really well for my toiletries. Um, so I have a little first aid kit in here with some um, patches for the uh, uh, gear that I have. A couple alcohol wipes, some patches. I got some moleskin, some burn gel, um, some Motrin, a couple ba a couple size band aids. So just a small little first aid and patch kit. Uh, just a little. Um, thing a degree deodorant just a travel size travel size of gold bond toothpaste and my toothbrush uh, you know again you don't really have to take the cover if you want to save ounces but for me I don't, I don't really care doesn't add up to much I did bring some lotion you know in the in the um, winter months it does get drier sometimes I'm in my tent I'm just itchy or something like that so I can put some lotion on there and then I got uh, looks like these are just emodiums uh, just in case you eat something funky and and uh, it comes right out. So that's basically my toiletry kit. And that all goes into this little seal line pouch. Nice and lightweight, nice and strong. And then finally my cook set. Uh, I have my spork here, just a lightweight titanium uh, spork. I believe it's Tokes. This is a Tokes pot that I recently got. So it was actually the maiden voyage of this pot. I like this size better, which I believe is a 900 milliliter. Um, I like this size better than the 750 milliliter, and I also like the 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 width of it. You know, it's something that's got a little bit broader base on it, so it works really well setting it on a fire, which is what I mostly do um, if I can. Uh, you know, I won't waste fuel. It's got the long handles, which are crucial for that. Being able to set it in the fire and take it off. Some most of the 750. Uh, pots just have those really short handles So I have the top here and then I have a few things inside. I have this little scrubby This came from Lunatech the uh, the spray bottle that I reviewed This is actually really awesome because it uh, you know, it cleans up really easily it's, it's got a little bit of abrasiveness to it and it works really well for for cleaning out pots cleaning cleaning your hands 
things like that. Um, I've got some, uh, just some little wilderness wash, little soap. You can use this for anything. You can use it shampoo, body wash, wash your hands. It is concentrate, so you do want to put it in the, you know, put a drop in the, in the pot with some water and then use it that way. I have my stove, which is a white box stove. It's basically a um, beer bottle stove. Uh, again, these alcohol stoves work really, really well in the uh, winter months. And then I just bring this little bottle of alcohol here. And on the inside of my uh, pot here, I have the, uh, the little wind windscreen. This really does increase the efficiency of the stove. So basically, this would just go around the outside of the stove. Now this stove, the plume on this stove, is a bit wider. It spreads out you know, a little bit. So I've tried this with the more um, narrow uh, pans or mugs and it doesn't work as well. It doesn't heat as fast. It works really good with this wider pot though. Nice and stable on there. Um, and again, it just, it heats it up really, really well. Um, just got a little uh, spices in here. I think this is just some like steak seasoning or something. Uh, some olive oil. And then I just have a little, a uh, little bit of tinder in here. This is from Pearl Camp Tech. This is their, uh, we believe this is their fast fast fire tinder or their fat rope. Just put into this little uh, little canister here, nice and lightweight. And there's there's a ton of fire starter in there. Um, but yeah, I really like this Tokes pot a lot. It's probably one of my favorite pieces of uh, titanium equipment. Now I used to have Tokes a long time ago. I never had this size, but I had like all their stuff. I've tried a lot of different titanium cookware, and although this isn't the thickest, it is a little more thin walled. Um, it's lightweight and, uh, and I just love the size and the capability of this pot. So I think that's about it for my gear. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I may have missed something. I'm not sure. Uh, if you want to check out that video, go back a couple videos and check that out. Hope you guys enjoyed that video and give it a big thumbs up for me. Make sure you share it to your friends on your social media if you think they might be interested. Leave me a comment below if you have any questions or you just want to say hello. And as always, if you haven't already done so, please click that subscribe button and that notification bell to be notified of new videos.